So big news guys, I got my own scissor. The Mapbeck scissor is now available. This is the V1. It's a five and a half inch scissor. I also have a five inch on pre-order, uh, but this one is in stock. The handle was created by me. Um, the point of the blade was created by me. Um, the tang was created by me. This is was built to be comfortable in my hand. I put a little groove uh, in the edge of the scissor so you can cut with your thumb uh, half out of the scissor, which is something I really enjoy uh, when I'm cutting hair. And this scissor is great for wet cutting and dry cutting. So um, if you're looking for a new scissor, go to freesaloneducation.com and pick one up. Okay, so I want you to focus on the angle um, when we're going in to cut the face frame. Now, this is the most important thing when cutting a face frame is to make sure that your elevation is right. You want it to be about 45 degrees when they have medium to high density hair because um, you want that little bit of extra elevation. So what I'm doing is a tease cutting technique. It's a half open, half close of the scissor, and I'm just over directing everything right over the part or over to the opposite side of the head and that's where I'm going to start the tease cutting technique. So that over direction creates length on the opposite side. So that's really my goal is just to make sure that I'm, I keep growing the length off to the one side and you can see that really nice angle that it creates. Also another little tip, I like to use a flat iron in between my cutting because once you cut hair dry, if it's cut in a place, like if it's cut shorter, it's almost poker straight. So you want to add a little bit of bend to it so you can really see that natural fall that it's going to get. So you can see how soft that angle is. The tease cutting technique creates the softest angles you're going to get in hair cutting. So just going through there, the bigger the stroke with the tease cutting technique, the softer the line. So I go through here and on the weak side of the head, which is what I'm on now, I go through with a really heavy stroke because I don't want to create real harsh lines on this side. I want it to be just nice and light, but still have that layering in the movement. So now you can see the layering kind of starting to build up. Now I'm going to work a clock pattern and I'm going to bring everything back to the very center back. So we start off uh, center back. I do tease cutting, a nice high elevation. I work my way straight up the head. Then I take another pie shape section or clock shape and then I over direct that to the center back. And I just keep working my way back the entire head shape, over directing everything back. What that's doing is it's pushing the most weight right to the ear, which is typically where we lose the most density in a haircut um, because there's not as much from your hairline up to the top of your head. Um, there's not as much density in the hair. So I want to push that weight over, but still create some nice short layers to get that kind of shag effect in the haircut. So again, I work my way just to the ear and then I stop um, and I because everything else was already cut during that face frame portion. Then you'll go through, you can cut your perimeter, get it nice and smooth, whatever length that you want. And I go through to finish it with the Joyco Beach Shake Spray. It's a texture spray. I created a lot of texture in this cut, so I want to show it off using the right product. So I spray that through. You can see all the layers really coming to life. It's a simple technique, but it's got to be done the right way. Make sure you focus on that elevation. Hope you guys like this video. If you want my scissor, go to freesaloneducation.com and pick one up for yourself. Thanks for watching.